Welcome to our lecture online and now that we've seen lots of videos with all kinds of theory let's put all that theory into practice. Here's some sample problems and the first problem is something to do with length. So an object that moves really fast will be observed by the person that's moving along with the object to be a certain length, in this case a space rocket. And so the person on the space rocket sees the length of the rocket to be equal to 100 meters. So we call that the rest mass length L sub naught. So here we have an observer which is let's say the person is standing on the earth on a nearby planet or the earth watching the spaceship go by and so the t the, as the spaceship moves past a particular point the person here, the observer, times the time, how much time it takes for the spaceship completely to pass this point. So we start the stopwatch when the, when the spaceship gets to this point and we, start the, we stop the stopwatch when the, the end of the spaceship has passed that point and when observer A takes that time it takes 1.2 microseconds. So based upon that information can we figure out the velocity at which the spaceship is moving? And the answer is we should be able to. So we start with the basic premise that the distance equals velocity times time. Alright, so in this case the distance that we're measuring, uh, that of course that A is measuring, the distance would be L as measured by A is equal to the velocity of the spaceship which is V times the time measured by A. So that's the time measured by A. So here I use a subscript so we make sure we know which time and which length we're dealing with. So here observer A is measuring everything. Observer A is, is seeing the length of the spaceship and of course observer A is not going to see the spaceship at 100 meters. Observer A is going to see the spaceship as a shorter spaceship because the spaceship is probably moving quite fast. Whatever the velocity is which we're looking for but we do know how long it took for the spaceship to pass a particular point again as observed by A. So I use the subscripts there so we know what, we do to, what to do with that. Now we don't know what the length of the spaceship is as observed by A but we do know what it is as observed by B and there's a relationship between the two. We can say that the length as measured by A is equal to the length as measured by B times the square root of 1 minus v square over c square. Again when v is equal to 0 the length will be the same but when v is a large number 1 minus a large fraction will become a small fraction which means that the length as seen by a will be small compared to the length as seen by b. So we're going to replace that and we're going to instead of length of a we're going to plug in the equivalent in relation to the length as measured by b. So the length as measured by b times the square root of 1 minus v square over c square is equal to the velocity times the time as measured by a and of course that is a known quantity right there. So now we have a relationship where everything is known, an equation where we know the length as measured by b, the time as measured by a and now all we have to do is solve this equation for the velocity. So probably the first thing we want to do is square both sides. That gives us l squared of b times the quantity 1 minus v square over c square is equal to v square times t square as measured by a. So how do we solve for v here? Well let's see here. We can probably, hmm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and simplify this a little bit or at least write over common denominator. So this would be l square as seen by b times the quantity c square minus v square over c square and that equals v squared times the time as seen by a squared. Alright, so now what I can do is I can move the denominator to the other side and I can multiply this through with those two terms inside the parentheses. So this becomes c squared times the length as seen by b squared minus v squared times the length as seen by b squared and the c squared goes to the other side so this becomes c squared v squared times the time as seen by a squared. Alright, now I'm getting close because I want to isolate the v so I'm going to move this term to the other side and maybe turn the equation around. So we have c squared times v squared times the time as seen by a squared plus because when we move this to the other side it becomes positive. Turn the equation around so we get v squared times the length of b squared is equal to what we have left on the other side which is c squared times the length of b squared. Alright, now we can go ahead and factor out a v squared. So I have v squared times the quantity c squared times the time as seen by a squared plus the length as seen by b squared is equal to c squared times the length as seen by b squared. I can now go ahead and divide both sides by that so I get v squared is equal to c squared 
times the length as seen by b squared divided by the quantity c squared as a time as seen by a squared plus the length as seen by b squared. All right, we're getting close now. Now we can go ahead and take the square root of both sides. When we do that, let's go up here, the square root, so we get v is equal to c times the length as seen by b, and now took the square root, divided by the square root of c squared, the time as seen by a squared, plus the length as seen by b squared. And now I have v in terms of everything else that I know. I know c, I know l sub b, I know t sub a. I can go ahead and plug in the numbers. So the velocity is equal to the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8. Matter of fact, I probably want to leave it in terms of c, because I simply want to express the velocity in terms of c. I don't really care about the meters per second, so let's just leave it in terms of c. So t times the length of seen by b, which is 100, divided by the square root of, and here I can write c squared, which is 3 times 10 to the 8, quantity squared, times the time is measured by a, which is 1.2 microseconds, which is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 6, quantity squared, multiply that together, plus the length of b, which was 100, quantity squared. All right, that should give me the proper value for the velocity. Let's see. So, 3e to the 8 squared times 1.2e to the 6 minus squared equals... Add to that 100 squared equals, take the square root of that, take the inverse of that, and then multiply times 100 equals, and what I get is that the velocity is equal to 0.268 times the speed of light. So, a space rocket that flies past the Earth at 0.268 times the speed of light if it happens to be 100 meters long when it's at rest, so that is the length as seen by a, an observer on the spaceship, will travel past the Earth, a person on the Earth that's stationary relative to the Earth, and that can see the rocket moving at that speed, will time the rocket as it passes a certain point in space. It takes 1.2 microseconds for the rocket to speed past that particular point. Based upon an information, we can figure out that the velocity of the spaceship is 0.268 times the speed of light, and that's how it's done.